In 2003, I had the opportunity to visit the Northern European country of Latvia, giving a retreat for the Missionaries of Charity. And having experienced this former Soviet bloc country 14 years after the fall of the wall and the end of the communist persecutions of believers makes the, the story that was shared by a bishop from Latin, Latvia even more poignant. He explained that in Latvia, the Soviets forcibly imposed their communist rule after World War II. Part of their policy was the systematic elimination of all religion. So they arrested pastors, priests, and bishops, intimidated them, bribed them, did everything they did, could to cut off the flow of grace. They even made it a crime to possess a Bible, which was considered anti-communist and therefore treasonous. One priest who was arrested for possessing the Bible was named Victors. When they arrested him, the Soviet agents threw the Holy Scriptures on the floor, trampling on it in front of the priest. They ordered the priest to step on it as a sign of scorn for the Christian faith, but he refused. Instead, he knelt down and kissed the sacred book. For doing this, he was condemned to 10 years of hard labor in Siberia. Ten years later, Victor's returned to his parish and during the celebration of Mass, offered underground to a small group of believers, he dared to raise the Bible again, proclaiming its indestructible power and risking imprisonment again. What meaning it would have had for him to hold up that Bible and say the word of the Lord. And the parishioners cried with joy and praised and thanked God their priest had not relinquished their faith, his faithfulness to Christ and his reliance on the word of God. He understood that the only lasting joy in life, the only thing worth living for is friendship with Jesus Christ, which is nourished by God's inspired word that we must not take for granted reading the gospel. And for this priest, Victor's, nothing was going to make him compromise that. A wonderful testimony given by the Bishop of Latvia. When Jesus calls his first disciples, we should notice they're first called to simply be with him, to learn from him. Yes, later he's going to send them out. But before that, he wants them to be trained, to abide with him. Because only if we know Christ can we possibly bring him to others. Today is the Sunday of the Word of God, instituted by Pope Francis on the third Sunday of Ordinary Time to help reawaken an awareness of the importance of sacred scripture in our lives as believers. Scripture places us in a permanent and living dialogue with God. Personally, I take a short scripture passage each morning, such as the daily gospel, and send, spend 20 to 30 minutes meditating on it. Sometimes just a verse or phrase to hear and absorb that word of God. And then that can resonate throughout the day. This time spent in prayerful reading of scripture each day is key for me to be a disciple of the Lord. Now, it probably won't look the same for everyone, but each of us need that daily commitment to prayer. And even if we start with just five or 10 minutes, I really invite to spend that reading and praying with the four gospels. We hear Jesus say, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Just as the people of Nineveh converted at that preaching of Jonah, are there things I need to hear things I need to leave behind? What's preventing me from following Christ? What sins do I need to repent of and change? Discipleship requires us to stay focused and keep our eyes fixed on Christ. And not all that different than the first century, we live in a society of paganism, idolatry, immorality, and corruption. So many things that can distract us away from Christ. So much noise and busyness. Peter had to let go of his nets. John had to leave his father. We have to be free and immersed in God's word in order to follow as disciples. 
Jesus Christ is calling us to be members of his kingdom, invites all to listen to his words in the scriptures and to live this new relationship with him. Today we recall there is a cost to discipleship, that following Christ requires sacrifice because it is a commitment to follow him, to listen to him, to learn from him, and to change our lives when needed. Awed by these apostles who took up the challenge and responded to the invitation, may we follow their example and keep our focus on Jesus Christ. To him be all praise and glory, now and forever. Amen.